Hello and good evening. Welcome to Stutter Pot TV. I'm your host, NJW, and I'm back with another crime news episode of Twisted Crimes. And my God, bro. <laughs> This is the story of Marietta Matthews, aged 26, a beautiful and smart girl who had a bright future ahead of her, and Tamiko Merriwether, a loving and caring mother who dedicated her life to helping others, who were both murdered by the boyfriend of Marietta. They were killed by Nathan Rashad James, a 24-year-old man who had a history of mental illness and violence. Hello and welcome to Twisted Crimes. Subscribe and hit the like button for more stories. Marietta Matthews was born on June 6, 1994, in Dallas, Texas. She was the daughter of Tamiko Merriwether, a nurse, and Michael Matthews, a businessman. She had two brothers, Michael Jr. and Marcus, who were both younger than her. Marietta was a bright and beautiful girl who loved music, dancing, and fashion. She graduated from Skyline High School in 2012, where she was a popular and outgoing student. She was involved in many extracurricular activities and also excelled academically and received several awards and scholarships. She attended the University of North Texas, where she majored in business administration. She wanted to start her own fashion line and become an entrepreneur. She graduated from college in 2016 with honors. Marietta's mother Tomiko was born on March 3, 1965, in Atlanta, Georgia. She moved to Dallas with her family when she was a child. She was a kind and compassionate. So this this dude has killed the mother and the daughter. Is what I'm getting so far. The, the the girl's really intelligent. She went through a lot. She went through a lot to get where she got. A person who always helped others in need. She became a registered nurse and worked at the Parkland Hospital for over 20 years. She specialized in neonatal care and saved many lives of premature babies. She was a devoted mother who raised her three children with love and care. She was also a devout Christian who attended the New Life Fellowship Church. Marietta and Tomiko had a close and loving relationship. They shared many interests and hobbies. They often spent time together shopping, watching movies, or going to the spa. They also confided in each other about their personal issues and gave each other advice. Marietta met Nathan in 2019 through a mutual friend. They started dating soon after and moved in together in an apartment in Dallas. Nathan was born on July 7, 1996, in Houston, Texas. He was the son of Sandra James, a single mother who struggled with drug addiction and poverty. He had a troubled childhood and dropped out of school at an early age. Well, how did he get that information that she struggled with drugs and poverty? Bad enough she was a single mother. He became involved in gangs and crime and had a history of domestic violence and drug abuse. He had several arrests and convictions for assault, robbery, and possession of firearms. According to their friends and family, their relationship was turbulent and toxic. Nathan was abusive and controlling towards Marietta. He would often hit her, insult. Wait, they said that in the beginning that he was dead. Did she, I wonder, did she know that about him before she started dating him? Or did she found out? Why she didn't just leave? Her ...and isolate her from her loved ones. He also cheated on her with multiple women and got one of them pregnant. Marietta tried to break up with Nathan several times, but he would always beg her to take him back or threaten to harm himself or her. He also manipulated her by showering her with gifts and apologies. Marietta loved Nathan despite his flaws and hoped that he would change for the better. She also felt sorry for him because of his difficult background and mental health issues. Tomiko did not approve of Marietta's relationship with Nathan. She saw him as a dangerous and unstable person who did not deserve her daughter's love. She tried to convince Marietta to leave him and offered her support and protection. She also prayed for her daughter's safety and happiness. On February 7, 2021, Tomiko decided to visit Marietta at her apartment. She was worried about her daughter's well-being and safety. 
She knew that Marietta was in an abusive and toxic relationship with Nathan, who had a history of mental illness and violence. To okay, so now at this point, the mother knows all this, but where's the dad? Because they mentioned him earlier. So where is he now? Because that plays a lot in a man thinking he can beat on a woman because the father's not around. There's no male figures. I don't hear nothing about no uncles, none of that type of things. So. Yumiko wanted to talk to her daughter face to face and persuade her to end her relationship with Nathan once and for all. She also wanted to show her love and support for her daughter. She packed some food and clothes for her and drove to her apartment. However, when she arrived at the apartment, she was greeted by a horrifying sight. Nathan was there with a gun in his hand. He had been waiting for her and planned to kill her as revenge for interfering with his relationship with Marietta. He blamed Tomiko for causing him problems and trying to take his girlfriend away from him. He shot Tomiko multiple times in the living room without any warning or mercy. He then went to the bedroom where Marietta was sleeping. He woke her up and told her that he had killed her mother. He then shot Marietta several times as well. He wanted to end their lives together because he was obsessed with her and could not bear the idea of losing her or sharing her with anyone else. He then called 911 and confessed to the murders. He also posted a video on his Facebook page where he apologized for what he had done and said that he loved Marietta but could not live without her. Oh my god, bro! So you done killed her because you can't live without her. That doesn't make any sense. Because once you kill her, she's gone forever. The logic of that is, is crazy to me. <laughs> Oh my God. Oh my God. And I'm just crying now. You know, already did it. Now he's crying. Should have been crying in the car. And got away from them people. <laughs> ah! Kill yourself, you going to jail, Jack. <laughs> oh, crazy dog. <laughs> crazy dog, I'm sick. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> this ain't funny, but he sound like the dude off Harlem Nights who say, I killed my brother. <laughs> He then barricaded himself in the apartment and refused to surrender to the police who arrived at the scene. The police heard gunshots from inside the apartment and tried to communicate with Nathan, but he did not respond. After several hours of negotiation, the SWAT team entered the apartment and found Nathan dead from a self gunshot wound. They also found the bodies of Tomiko and Marietta lying on the floor covered with blood. They were pronounced dead at the scene. The police launched an investigation into the case. They collected evidence from the crime scene, such as the gun used by Nathan, his phone, his laptop, his social media accounts, his fingerprints, his DNA samples, etc. They interviewed witnesses, such as neighbors, friends, family members, co-workers, etc., who knew Nathan, Marietta, or Tomiko. They proceeded to reviewing the 911 call made by Nathan and the video he posted on Facebook before hurting himself. They concluded that Nathan acted alone and that he had premeditated the murders of Tomiko and Marietta. They well, one thing about this case, if you was going to kill yourself, that's what you should have done. That's, this is crazy that he didn't kill. It's three lives from one heart broken. That's crazy. They found out that Nathan had a history of mental illness and substance abuse and that he had been diagnosed with bipolar disorder and schizophrenia. Police learned that Nathan had been abusive and violent towards Marietta and that he had threatened to kill her and her mother before. Nathan also had a pregnant girlfriend who was unaware of his relationship with Marietta. The police speculated that Nathan's motives for killing Tomiko and Marietta were jealousy, anger, and revenge. They believed that Nathan was jealous of Tomiko's relationship with Marietta and that he felt that she was trying to take his girlfriend away from him.
Police believe that Nathan was angry at Tomiko for disapproving of his relationship with Marietta and for trying to persuade her to leave him. They also believed that Nathan wanted to take revenge on Tomiko for interfering with his relationship with Marietta and for causing him problems. Since Nathan hurt himself after killing Tomiko. Where is the father? They haven't mentioned that not one time. Where is the dad? That's the question right now. Tomiko and Marietta, there was no trial or sentencing for him. However, the police did charge him with two counts of murder and one count of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. They issued a warrant for his arrest and added him to the Texas Department of Public Safety's list of wanted fugitives. They then notified his pregnant girlfriend about his crimes and his death. The murder case of Tomiko, Marietta, and Nathan shocked and saddened the community. Many people expressed their condolences and sympathy for the victim's families and friends. Tomiko's husband, Michael Matthews, released a statement on behalf of the family. He said that they were devastated by the loss of Tomiko and Marietta and that they were trying to cope with the tragedy. He also thanked everyone for their prayers and support. He also said that Tomiko was a loving wife, mother. Well, he should have went over there. If he's so concerned about these two women if that's in his life that he have lost, he should have been the one to intervene this whole time. It shouldn't have been the mother. Keep your dick beaters to yourself. Quit hitting on my baby. Mother, sister, daughter, friend, and nurse who dedicated her life to helping others. He also said that Marietta was a beautiful, smart, talented, and kind-hearted young woman who had a bright future ahead of her. He also said that they forgave Nathan for what he had done and that they prayed for his soul. He also said that they hoped that his death- That's the problem right there. We too doggone forgiving. He ain't gonna forgive nobody to kill my baby. That's why he didn't intervene, because he's soft-hearted. Death would bring awareness to the issues of domestic violence, mental health, and gun control and that their story would help other victims of abuse to seek help and escape from their dangerous situations. Our deepest condolences to the family of Marietta Matthews and her mother. May their souls continue to rest in peace. Please stay safe out there and see you guys in the next video. See that was a problem. This is a sad case of three people losing their lives because one individual couldn't take being without one of them. The dad didn't intervene. This twisted crimes is really twisted. This is a sad tale of people losing their lives over nothing. Meaningless love. Because if you love somebody, you wouldn't want to hurt them. That's my take on it. And that's how I feel about love. If your love is your circle. Circle of people that you love. Now, you don't want nobody, you don't want nobody to hurt them because you don't want to hurt them. It's crazy. This man that took these people's lives and then took his own. His life was a tragic end too. He was somebody's son, somebody's this, somebody's that. This has been another episode of Stutter Pot TV, Twisted Crimes. Thank you for joining me, and I look forward to seeing you guys next time. Hit the subscribe button and the like button. So this, I can continue to bring you reaction videos as such. Thank you again and have a blessed day.